Um, I would say that my talk is a bit of an outlier in today's uh, conference proceedings. Everyone's talking about portfolio management and how you think about um, constructing a portfolio, analyzing a portfolio, managing a portfolio. Interestingly, uh, the venture capital process is not very susceptible to portfolio management. And what I mean by that is that uh, the opportunities present our, uh, themselves to us not in a collection so that we can once a year decide which ones we bet on and which ones we don't, force rank them and put them up on nice charts and things like that. They come one at a time. And so each one has to be evaluated on a yes-no basis in real time. And um, even late in the portfolio's construction, you might say, oh, well, we've got um, a lot of uh, red colored companies now. Here's another red company. We're waiting for a green one. What if you don't get a green one uh, in time for the evolution of the fund? Uh, then you've got a hole in your fund. So we tend not to think that way. And the other reason that portfolio management uh, theory doesn't help us an awful lot is what do you mean by the, the phrase managing a portfolio? It means that periodically you look at the portfolio and you say, well, we're going to uh, get rid of this one, get rid of that one. Once we make the investment, we're stuck in that project. We can't abandon the project because if we do and the project isn't well agreed by all of the other co-investors to be failing for some reason, then um, we're doing a bad thing to the entrepreneur. We're doing a bad thing to our co-investors and we lose franchise value and reputation very, very quickly. So once we're in, we're in. So those are two reasons why portfolio management per se is, is not a craft that we spend a lot of time using. It's very much an art form and a challenging art form. Uh, some time ago, we took a look at our companies and in an oversimplistic way, we put them into two buckets, ones that were successful and ones that were not successful. And uh, to our amazement, the ones that were in the successful bucket were at that time, or at the disposition of the success, were characterized and dominated by projects not the one or ones that we bet on originally. But lo and behold, the ones that were struggling and failing we're still grinding away on the original project that we invested in. Now, what the heck does that say about managing a early stage entrepreneurially driven company? It, it points to the importance of astute management, management that can, together with the board and the investors on the board, walk that fine line of knowing when to diversify within the company to different projects, when to give up, and when to keep going. And I'll bet there are books written on that, but it's not an easy answer, easy way to answer that question.